Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop, of course. Me, Mitch, fabricator, filmmaker. So, thanks for joining us. What's new? Look, I got a piece of tubing. This is stainless steel. It's three inch OD. This is going to be my muffler. I'm going to make a muffler for the Tiger Cub. My shirt today, it came from Sturgis. I was at Sturgis in 2019. I was invited to take an Excelsior down there. That was right after my accident. Michael Lichter was the organizer. He's also a very good photographer. And he took this photo of me. I was still on crutches. That's the story. We're gonna do a little slideshow about the fender mounting on the on the Tiger Cub because I switched forks, so the fender had to be remounted. So Mitch is gonna pop that up on the screen. Okay, here's what's going on with the with the fender mounts. It used to have a couple of, of fender mounts on the on the back of the fork blades and they were arc welded on and they were crooked. So I didn't like that at all. So I hacksawed them off, I filed it smooth, and then I made four new ones. I needed a fixture to hold them, so I, I took a piece of aluminum, I drilled two holes at the correct spacing, I made up a couple spaces, and then I drew lines on the side so I knew where the front and the back was. And then this is just a friction fit. By moving the bolts in slightly, these mounts just hold themselves. And this is what it looks like after I, I TIG welded them on because arc welding was huge blobs. It really didn't look elegant at all. So that's the first stage of mounting my new fenders. And I changed them over because I changed the forks. Here's the old mount and it used to be one piece and I thought I could, well, I, I did end up using these two hoops here. So I had to remake the ends because this is all one piece and I didn't want it. I had to position the fender. So what I did was I took three blocks of wood. There's one, two, three. You can just see it there. I held these ones on with masking tape because I wanted to get the right spacing. If the blocks are too large, this one won't hit, and if the blocks are too small, this one will hit and these ones won't. So I found the right height of the blocks, and then I've got the fender in position. And there's a hoop, you can't see it too well here, there's a hoop that comes over here. So I need to mount the hoop to the old mounts on the, on the heavyweight forks. Here's the hoop right here, and I've spaced it out with a, a little bit of wood. So it's gonna get mounted from here out to here. So there's one bolt here, there's two holes here. So I'm gonna make it out of aluminum and the size or the, or, or the distance in between is different. So it's gonna be a stepped mount. It's not gonna be flat. Here's the drawing I made and it, it's four inches in between on the fork and then on the fork brace it's 4.320 so that means that each side needs to be 160 as a step and I put this on the bike there's a sort of a elongated piece that this fits onto this is just cardboard and then I traced the two holes there so I've taken my cardboard and I've made a shape I've got some aluminum, it's half inch aluminum. This is in the mill and I've, I've traced out the shapes. On the right side, it's going to be longer. So these two sides aren't the same. This is going to hold the brake mount because if you remember a couple episodes ago, I took the brake mount off the front uh, backing plate. So the brake mount now is going to be up here. So I need to cut slots. So I, I milled down almost 160,000 so that the smaller end mill, it's going to be a 5 16 end mill, it doesn't have to cut the whole thickness of the half inch plate. There you go, I've got my 5 16 end mill. It's a ball end mill, I just happened to grab it, doesn't really matter. And there you go, I've cut the slots to fit the fork. So this is... In a way, it's kind of a simple piece, but it's kind of complex to make because I had to think about it. There's right and left, and there's a step. So it wasn't 
just a simple job. There, now you can see the right and the left. This is the right side because that's where the brake cable anchors to. And this is the left side. I've tapped the holes and I tapped them one quarter inch national fine because then the bolt goes through the brace and it anchors right into this. So now what I did, here's the mill vise. Here's a larger end mill. It's got a little bit of a, of a radius in the corner. I drilled a couple holes. These holes are spaced 5 eighths of an inch apart. I put the bolts up from, up from the bottom and then I can mill off the step. Took off 160 thou. And that's what the plates look like when they're all done. I think they turned out quite nice. They're going to get anodized black. So I'm pretty happy with that. You won't really see them on the bike because when they're black, they just kind of blend in. Right now, they, they kind of stick out a little bit. I, I needed to make new ends for the fender stays. So I took some half inch cold rolled and I took a couple pieces and I rounded all the ends. So I've got four rounded ends and I took an eighth inch slotting saw, run it at about 180 RPM and you cut through. So that's part of it. Then I took a, a piece of cardboard, amazingly, and I traced out a pattern. It's got a quarter inch hole. And so I made four end pieces like that. I filed them up smooth. Here you can see how the, how the brace mounts with those two pieces. So it, it bolts onto the fork, the mount comes out and the fork brace, the fender mount fork brace, it mounts on. There's the bolts bolting into the quarter inch national fine tapped holes. Here we go. This is uh, more progress and I've got the four end pieces done and these, these slot into there. And I put them in I, and I did a tig tack on either side. And this is the final product there. Everything is nickel silvered in. You can see I've got quarter inch stainless steel, steel bolts. I faced off the ends and my front fender is now mounted. It's in the paint booth right now. So all these mounts. So that's how I redid the front fender. It was about, it was two days work. It took longer than I thought, but I think it turned out quite nice. Our project for today, one of the two projects today is to extend the side stand. Last, last episode, we looked at the side stand and we, we uh, uh, figured out that it was three quarters of an inch too short. So I have metal. This one is really skinny. It's been on the ground. It's thinned down. So we've got some 3 16 inch cold roll. We're going to make a new piece. This is going to go on the lathe. This is going to go on the lathe, actually. I found out that this fits in my spindle hole. So I can hold this in my chuck. Because this is a taper, I got three pieces of aluminum. And they're going to go, I think, yeah, they're going to go around like that. So it'll get hacksawed off, it'll get faced and, and drilled out, and then we're going to make an insert that gets TIG welded into that. It'll, it'll be cut off to the right length. So one of the first things we're going to do is to measure to get an idea of just how long this one is, because once you cut it and you kind of lose, lose track of where you were, where you are. So. We'll do a, a little bit of measuring here and then we'll use the hacksaw. There's my rough sketch. There's two different sides. There's, I don't know if you call this the top or the bottom, but I've got this, see here, I've got this piece here. This is the, this is the holder for the spring and this is at an angle. So if I measure here, it's not going to be the same as here. So I'm going to measure this side and I'm going to measure from here right down to the, to the center, the center right there. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I need to extend it by three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to measure in inches and it is nine and an eighth inch. So nine and one eighth inch. And that goes to there and that goes to there. 
that's our baseline. So, gonna cut that off. You can see how that's worn, can't you? There's, you can, you can see the thickness there. And then if you look over here, see how it's got really, really thin. So that's why we're going to use three, three sixteenths plate. Make it nice and, nice and sturdy. So this is going to get made out of the 3 16 plate and then this little piece that comes up is going to be 8 inch plate. So this little piece here is going to get welded. It'll be TIG welded onto here. Look, it just, it just fits. That's very convenient, isn't it? Then I don't have to grind all this off. So that's another reason I'm making a new one. Okay, we're going to leave that right now. We're going to go to the lathe and we're going to work on the extending the side stand shaft. On a lathe, they often talk about the size of the spindle hole. That is the, the hole, the size of the hole that goes in behind the chuck. And this is, see that? It's just large enough. This is not a big spindle hole. I, I would like to have a lathe with a big spindle hole. But it works on this, so that's great. Because otherwise, I don't know how you do that. That'd be hard to set it up in a mill. Let me do that. So I got my three pieces of aluminum. Or if you're British, you might say aluminium. English always pronounce things differently. And I was born there. There we go. So let's make the piece that goes in there now, and then we'll, we'll TIG weld it up. It's gonna hammer in there nicely. Okay, look at that. That's a good fit. There's that word again, fit. There have been some comments about that, I see. Okay, so we got a little bit of a taper here, so I'm gonna move the compound maybe one degree so that it's not straight. At the end, it'll still have a small taper. And I need to measure this because we'll cut that down first. It's actually 9 sixteenths. 562. So, so we've got to take off 187,000. So 
I said about one, one degree, maybe a touch more. So there we go. We've moved the compound. Let's go check the fit, okay? Two pounder. I don't know if it's necessary. That's a good fit. Okay, we're gonna take weld. So while this cools down, I think I'll go sand, sand this on the belt sander so that this is nice and smooth on the radius there. That'll look good. It's nice how they match, you know, one side's not higher than the other. So nine and seven eighths is right to the shoulder, right there. And so this piece here, let's see if I look and see how that was, it gets cut like that. So basically what we got to do is to cut this sort of at an angle like like that. Oops, I don't like that. That's going to bother me. So, well, let's check the height because it's going to change a little bit when this comes out like that and actually this isn't that hard to fix to put a sleeve in there because this piece comes off like that it's not like this is part of the entire frame so that's going to get fixed so let's let's put this on the ground now and just see how the height is and set that and i don't think we're going to weld this on right now until that gets fixed and then we're going to spray paint Mitch's frame because he's keen. So that goes something like, like so. Okay, so, so the angle's out. <clears throat> the angle's cut like that and it needs to be that. So it needs some taken off here. If I take a felt pen now, so how do we find out 
the right angle. So we do it this way. If I go around with a felt pen, it's going to tell me the right angle, basically. And then what's going to happen is when that comes off, it's going to lean a little bit more, but then when I take the slack out of here, it'll be more upright. So I think we're going to end up at a, at a, at a pretty good angle for the side stand. So if I take this off now, let's have a look at the line and we'll see where we are. So you can see, if I grind it down or hacksaw then file it or whatever I do, take it to that line, that's going to be very, very close. So that's basically what's next. So we're going to move on now, have a break for lunch, and then we're going to go in the spray booth, paint Mitch's frame. It's going to be a beautiful blue with an Imran clear coat. He says he's quite excited about that. So this is Mitch's frame. Last episode, it got bead blasted. It got primed. It's got one coat of etching primer on it and two coats of high fill primer. When you put on a high fill primer, you need to sand it a bit. That's part of the instructions. So you can use 320 paper, or in this case, because it's a tube, we're going to use some scotch Bright. And all, you, all you're doing, really, you're taking off the shine. So that's, see how it's kind of a dull finish there? The paint comes off a bit. That's all you want to do. You see the shine? You don't, you don't want the shine. So this is handy because this goes into the corners easier than sandpaper. So, Scotch Bright works fine for me. I'm going to show you the paint now. This is basically what paint we're using. It's, I've had this for a long time. It's, it's PPG. It's not available up here in Canada anymore. You can buy it in the States, I understand. It's not inexpensive either. So, it's a base coat clear coat. This is this is reducer. You mix it one to one. You spray it on. It dries. It dries in a, a matte finish. It's not shiny. But what's nice about this is that you can spray it on and if, if there's a little bit of heat it dries that fast. After 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you can mask it. You can put on a decal. You, can, you don't have to wait hours waiting for it to dry. That's really handy. So this is the base coat, and I'll show you the clear coat. Here's the clear coat. I think we talked about this before. This is Imron, and this is the reducer. No, this is the activator. So it's two different systems. This is the paint and reducer, one-to-one. -one. This is the clear coat and the activator, and it's three to one. So there's all different ratios. You get mixing sticks, some are four to one. That's what we're doing.
that's our episode for today. We've mixed motorcycles and bicycles up a little bit. I hope you don't mind that. I think it's all part of what goes on in this shop. Thanks for watching. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, we would appreciate that very much. Stay safe. Take care. See you next time.